Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Design Show. My name is Ryan Warren and let's get straight into the news. The news that I'm most excited about this week has come from Google. They've come out and said that Gmail is going to be relaunched in the next two to three weeks with a fresh new interface design. It's the first time they've touched the design since 2014 and it's led to some pretty heavy changes. Uh, a few of the different features coming across for mobile such as Smart Reply and then also a nice new right hand panel where they're incorporating some of the other add-ons that we'll get to in a minute. For me, this feels like a really nice hybrid between the current Gmail platform that we know and Inbox that they launched two or three years ago. It's been quite widely talked about that Inbox was a bit of a pilot program to try new features for Gmail and see how people responded to them and then maybe move them over to the new platform at a later date. For me, it definitely feels like that's what they've done. You can see some of the new designs here. As I say, most notably would be that right-hand panel where they've incorporated calendar and keep and tasks. I think that's going to be a really nice experience to be able to write your emails and check your calendar all in one window and not have to move between tabs like you do now. For me, the first thing I noticed was how icon heavy it is. In fact, I've gone back and counted from the current Gmail that there are 13 icons and in the new design there are 37 in the standard screen state. Uh, it seems like they've definitely abandoned a few of the click to reveal feature panels in the current design and moved that into always visible icons in the new design. One of the big standouts for me is the left hand menu panel. Um, there's been a lot of discussions for a long time around how accessible the current Gmail design is for the visually impaired. You can see that small red tab that symbolizes that you're within the inbox section. They seem to have moved on from that and are highlighting that now with the red background element. I think that makes a lot more sense and it's definitely a lot clearer. Uh, but the compose button I think for me is where they've really missed a beat. In Inbox they introduced a really nice small red compose button in the bottom right corner which always made more sense to me because when you click that that's where the actual pop-up comes up for you to start writing. It's never really made a lot of sense for me in Gmail that you click the compose button on the top left hand side and then you get the pop-up window on the bottom right. So uh, I think they've missed a beat there but hopefully there's some setting or something that we can change to be able to get that element from Inbox back. Overall I think they've done a really good job. It's definitely going to be brought more in line with the rest of the Google products that we're used to. I'm really looking forward to having the ability to snooze emails and I'm really looking forward to having the smart reply over from the mobile experience too. But we'll link to the images of the screens down below. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about it. Next up this week is something that I've been looking forward to for a very long time and that is the release of the iOS app from Unsplash. Uh, I'm a passionate Unsplash user, I submit images very regularly and uh, I think they're really great at listening to the community as well as producing amazing web and mobile experiences. But take a little look through the design here. You can see it's a really simple experience. You can scroll down through the new feed and see things that have been submitted in the past few days. Uh, it seems like that's what they were going for as well, just really fast discovery and easy download of the images. I really like this little explore panel where you can go through the collections from the community, I think that's really nice. And then you can go into the search bar at the top here and search just by tags. There's no profiles yet it would seem, uh, but you can search by tags. Uh, I really like bikes, so let's look for Harley Davidsons. Then you can just scroll down to define the image that you want, like this one and swipe it into the bottom corner and it just saves it into your camera roll. So it's a really simple experience but I think it's really really beautifully crafted. Uh, I really like that easy quick access to the images and from a design perspective for those of you that are creatives working on iPads uh, it's really nice they have an iPad experience of this as well so if you want fast access to images uh, it's a great way to just pull those into your camera roll and then straight into your design work. So whether you're an Unsplash user or not the link will be down below. Uh, I urge you to go and check that out. They always listen to the community and give them exactly what they need so go and check it out it's a really really beautiful piece of work and the final piece of news this week comes from right here in Copenhagen and that is Michael Flarup who you may know from uh, Apply Pixels or North Play where he makes a lot of mobile games he is a tremendous app icon designer and is producing a book on app iconography. You can go to his website where he talks a little bit more about it. It sounds like it's going to be a really nice coffee table book, but the best part about it is it's not just going to be his own work. You can also submit your app icons to him and then he may incorporate you into the book also. So if that's the kind of design work that you do, you can send your work to him over on flareup.co and we'll also put his twiddle, uh, Twitter handle. It would all be very different if it was called Twittle. Twiddle. Twiddle, I did it again. His Twitter handle down here uh, where you can follow along and get the news and updates about that as he moves along with the project. So definitely go and have a look at that if that's your kind of work. The first designer in this week's showcase is a guy from the south of France who goes under the pseudonym of Nani. He's a very versatile designer, can do a lot of great illustration works 
Um, but the thing I really liked about him was this type style that he seems to have been working on since about October last year. Very gradient heavy, very bright and colorful and black backgrounds. I really like this whole set. Some of them grungier than others. You can really see these working for like a soft drink brand or something like that. I think he's doing some really cool things with the colors here and how they all mix together. My favorite ones would be, I think the Hell Yeah one, the way the H works into the E. And then also the Chill Beats, how that C and the B work together are really, really cool. But you can see if you go and look at these on the Dribble profile in chronological order, how the style has sort of moved along up to the ones he's working on now. He does also produce a lot of other varied work though, if you go and check out the portfolio on his website. Uh, but next up is a guy called Jeffrey Gallipoli from Venezuela. A uh, phenomenal illustrator. I love some of these book cover designs that he's done here for some, it seems like some fairy tale work. Just look at those illustrations, are incredible. But the big project that stood out for me for him was this packaging design for Criollo chocolate. The typography works really nice with the illustrations. I think the way the designs pull together is really good. Those illustrations are obviously incredible, but it's this last one here where he's built a repeat pattern out of it. I think this is absolutely beautiful work. And last up this week is a really nice guy called Joe Pritherick. He goes under the name of Mason London. Uh, we used to work together a few years back on some hardcore interface stuff. But since then, his illustration and music work has exploded. I really like this project that he's done here. Uh, it's a one to watch collection for It's Nice That. Uh, this is a really nice uh, example of his style of illustration. But for me, it's his motion graphic works that are his most impressive pieces. So here's a few of my favorites. Before we finish up today's show, uh, we put up a quick web page at thedesignshow.co uh, where you can find out a little bit more about us and the show. Uh, we use Simplice to do it. If you haven't used it already, it's a WYSIWYG that sits over the top of WordPress and will make your portfolio life a lot easier. So uh, go and check that out if you haven't already. But that's it for the show. If you like it, then please share it and subscribe. Uh, thanks so much and we'll see you next week.